Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it o'clock. I'm Pearl Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom B-Pow Picks Edition. Uh, yeah, where we're going to go over all the picks from yesterday, see how we did, and then I'm going to give you all the NHL picks for tomorrow. Now, I've had a few letters from several. I can't even count all the letters. Guido goes down every morning, gets the letter sack, and comes up and he pours it all over the letter table uh, and uh, Helen and all the people in the land we all go do the perlo dance like you guys do every morning you know and uh, we read your letters um, so I have letters saying uh, why is sometimes the picks that I give you right now different than the picks that I say that I do the next morning like what I'm going to vote to do right now and tell you about that well, that's because I have uh, clients and through the day things change. Like, for instance, yesterday Crosby had COVID and uh, or had his COVID issue or whatever the case may be. So he wasn't able to play for Pittsburgh. Uh, so I put my lean greater to Philadelphia, which I really shouldn't have did now second. Now that I look back on it or think about it, because... Sullivan, of course, is going to have Pittsburgh, uh, the Penguins, playing for Crosby now, right? They don't want to lose for Crosby, and uh, maybe it would have been a bigger lean to go towards the Penguins. That being said, Philadelphia did outshoot the Pens, but we'll get into that when we get into it. But things like that change. Goaltenders change. Sometimes I don't even know who, what goaltender is going to be in. And I'm like, oh, I wouldn't have did that. One of the, sometimes I miss it. Occasionally I'll miss it. Like yesterday, I had on for very small pearls here because uh, it was Preds playing Carolina. Carolina is so ridiculous that they can play six games or what is it, five games in eight nights and still beat a team. Like you shouldn't beat any team. But we'll get into that as well. But Ellis was put injured for the if I would have noticed that I would have told my patrons which you can go to right now in the bio hit the button if you go there I was saying that you know uh, if you comment or whatever if you join up I'll give you the month for free and this is the beginning of the month right now so you can get on it right now check it out also tennis picks are crazy over there I'm hitting like nuts, like 105 and 68. If you were betting on tennis right now, uh, putting three units on every play, uh, you would be up about 150 units, something like that. So whatever your whatever your unit is, like say it's 50 bucks. If you were putting 150 bucks on every play, uh, you would be up 100. You would up be up 50 bucks times 100. What did I do? Five times 50. So, like, a lot. <laughs> I can't do that math. You do that math. 2,500 bucks, something like that. You'd be up large. So, uh, and NCAA is rocking. So, there's a whole bunch of things that you get for that package. But you won't lose money, pretty much. Uh, so, uh, another, um, let's go to yesterday's games. We're just going to Perlo dance ourselves over there. That didn't work. I thought it would work, but it didn't. Uh, <laughs> okay, yesterday's games. Okay, let's start off with uh, Hurricanes versus Predators. Uh, this is the one we were talking about. Uh, I had I got both of these wrong, but I didn't like the play all that much. I I do a show three to five every day, three to five Eastern time. 3 in the afternoon till 5 Eastern time every day. Uh, we, it's a pick show, sort of. It's interactive. Uh, it's fun. It's really fun. People make their picks, and we find out what we did yesterday, and we talk about all the games. We talk about any trades that happen, rumors, all of that. And in that, I was talking to the GOAT, uh, John, from Off the Wall Hockey, and we both said it's like it's very likely the Hurricanes will pull this off, but I still went with the Predators because... Any team should beat any team playing five games in eight nights. I mean, 
that is ridiculous amount of hockey, especially since they were all on the road. So there was travel in there. Now, normally on uh, in a regular without COVID, it's even harder to do that. It never happens actually, uh, because you're going actually to a different place every night. So there's even more travel. But here there's less travel, so it's been a little bit of an adjustment to take that into consideration that the fatigue isn't quite as bad. But they were tough games. They were playing against like rival teams like Florida and all of that. And uh, they still pulled it out. If I'm right now, if I am David Poyle, I am basically saying it's over. If you can't lose to any team in the NHL that's played that much when you're fresh, you're done. Really. It's at this point in the season, which is getting close to the halfway point. Um, you got that that team has doesn't have enough character. You should be able to outwork that team. Simple as that. Anyways, uh, Jets versus the Canucks. We had the Jets, and I believe we had the oh we had it under, but we had large pearls on the Jets. Large pearls on the Jets. I did not think they were going to lose back to back. Uh, my friend, um, Professor MJ, who is fantastic, you want to check out his channel. He does picks that are more to do with the long-term investment. And he's a, he's a statistician, actually teaches statistics in university. And uh, he had the Canucks here, and he had them yesterday too, so he nailed that. But he had them here again tonight, I just couldn't see it. Laurent Boissois is playing too well, and hope he's playing too poorly. For this to have even been close. I should have probably been leaning more of the over here. I don't know why I wasn't. But it was for like not for half a pearl. This was for three time, three pearls at least. Large. Whatever whatever my clients large are. We had on that. Uh, lightning versus the stars. Um, we had the lightning here. Lightning wasn't giving very good juice. But it was so likely they were going to beat the Stars that we went with it anyways. And as it turns out, the Stars actually played really well. I watched this game. But uh, Vasilevsky, that's the thing. is The lightning cannot play their best and still win because they have Vasilevsky, which may be the best goaltender in the league. Um, so lightning went 2 nothing. We also had the under for medium pearl. So we're well up here. Um, depending on what your medium and large is. Let's say that our small is like half a pearl. So that's one down, one pearl down. This would be, uh, this would put us two, one and a half up, because I'm going half a pearl, three pearls for the large. That'd be one and a half up. This is two pearls on both, so we'd be up five and a half pearls. Islanders, uh, we also had this um, for a pearl. For one pearl so and the under so we're, we're seven and a half now uh, Rangers we had the Rangers and the under for small pearl so that was half a pearl on both because I was afraid of the Sabres here a little bit afraid of the Sabres here it felt like a spot that they might win I just couldn't go with them with Carter Hutton in but we also had the under so what are we up six and a half pearls this one would have knocked us down a bit no actually no because we had the over for large and we had the Flyers. I already mentioned to you about this. I changed my pick. I When when Crosby was out, I really thought the Flyers would, should win this. And honestly, they should have. I'm a Flyers fan. I watched it. They did outshoot the Penguins. But this Flyers team has to learn to do what Pittsburgh does. And that is win in all situations. Know how to keep, keep teams to the outside. Know how to play tired. Know how to? They, there's a whole lot of know-hows that the Flyers still have to learn to become a championship team. That the Penguins have. The Penguins on paper shouldn't be beating the Flyers. Honestly, they shouldn't be beating too many people with the defense that they have. Uh, Matheson, CC, and all of those uh, guys there on defense that they have. Uh, CC scored last night. But anyways, going back to our picks, we had the Flyers, and we had the over. So what were we up? Six and seven and a half, seven, six and a half, something like that. You, you remember. Uh, we would have lost a very small amount, like not even like 10% of a pearl. So we're still up. Uh, here we had the Blue Jackets and the under. And this was medium. So we're up nine and a half. And the under was for a small pearl. So we're up 10 pearls for the day. Canadians, we had PL. 
you know what? I kind of messed these up because they weren't full units that we were winning on in all of these. So I'm going to say I forgot about that. At nine and a half. So take it down to about eight and a half probably. Eight and a half pearls because you're not getting a full unit on every on every on every uh, pick. So um, it's like just a little bit under. So take it to eight and a half or eight. Uh, Canadians versus Senators. We had Canadians PL, which is at 180. And uh, this was a large pearl pick, I believe. So as you can tell, you can tell you each individually for as long as you want. I can do all the math and you can find out the exact percentages if you want. But the point of the matter is you're up a lot. Not to mention we nailed two tennis picks yesterday. Uh, and we had one incorrect. So we're up on that. It's just up, up, up. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, I, usually when I'm incorrect on or having a bad day, the most you'll lose is like a unit or two. Maybe uh, um, a push where you don't really lose anything at all. So you're making good money over there. It's fun. Um, okay, let's look at tomorrow's picks now, shall we? Uh, where, where, let me go over here. I'm going to write it down. I'm going to say 1120. I'm going to put it down on the bottom. Let people know where the picks are going to be. I should have said that in the beginning of the video. Shoot. Okay. Uh, I was going to say that in the beginning of the video, but I don't have time to do the video again. So whatever. Um, tomorrow's games. Okay, Washington versus Boston. Um, both of these teams have played the exact same amount of games. And yes, I do look at that. I look at how many games are played, how many were on the road, how long have they been on the road. Uh, with COVID, it changes things up a little bit. Um, it seems like road teams are starting to adapt to the idea of being uh, away from their teammates and all of those sort of things like that. Where in the beginning of the year, the beginning of the year road teams were losing more now it seems that the change in the road scheduling and what people what they do while they're on the road being in the room more instead of being together with each other teams are starting to adjust to that quite a bit um we got washington getting look at the dog money they're getting and if you go to opening they're getting 236 I recommend opening for dogs. 237 though at Westgate. Um, really good idea to get as many betting apps or books as you possibly can. So you can get yourself the best odds. That's why I show you this. Uh, 237 seems to be the best. It's only a decimal point. But I mean, if you're in Pinnacle, look at you're only getting two, 222. It's almost, you're almost getting better juice on Boston. The reason why I bring this up is, is I think this is probably going to be a pretty close game. However, for that juice, the way Washington's playing, um, right now Kuznetsov looks like he's injured, but Boston has Grizzlick out. Uh, is Lauzon back in now? Let's take a look. Um, no, Lauzon is out. Uh, Krejci's out. Grizzlick, Miller. I mean, they're really hurting on their D-line. Now, they have been doing not too bad. They've been fairly inconsistent. And a lot of that has to do with they have a lot of young players playing D there. So I'm going to lean Washington here. Um, if I remember on the weekly schedule, uh, this is dailyfaceoff.com, your weekly schedule extraordinaire. It's the best there, I said it. Uh, Boston, yeah, had two days off. Now they're playing Washington. And Washington also has had two days off. So I don't know what they played before, but it's not all that important. Both of them should have had practice time here. Uh, both of them have been almost have the exact same record. Uh, I got to lean Washington just for the juice here. Um, and the fact that Boston has some injuries on their back end. Uh, the only thing that I'm a little concerned about is uh, it says Samsonov is supposed to be in for this game. If that's the case... Um, I'm a little dicey with Rask in there. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure how Samsonov is going to play. Uh, did he? I think he actually played last game, so he should be a little better, a little go, um, a little more acclimated and back into the flow again. Um, 
But I'm going to go with Washington, and I'm going to lean the under because Raskin is in, and Boston generally plays under. Um, but I'm probably – I don't really like the total here very much, honestly. What's it, six? Yeah. Slightly lean the under, but, I mean, this is a Washington team that can – Go off the chain. Boston's been inconsistent defensively. It's tough. Uh, I'm going to lean the under here. But anyway, it's under six. But I, li I like the line at 236 or two, whatever you're getting that for. Um, 235 or 237. I mean, that's a great line for Washington right now. Toronto versus Edmonton. Um, I'm putting small pearls on this regardless. I'm not putting a big play on this. Um, Edmonton just lost twice against Toronto without Matthews in. One with Smith in, one with Koskinen in. I, I think Koskinen's done. I seriously do. I think that uh, uh, Holland is on the phone right now looking for a goaltender. You may even say C. Stalik, who they just picked up from Minnesota start playing some games right now because Koskinen, it looks like when they when they went through that long run there, it finished them or something. Uh, he can't play a lot of games, it doesn't appear. And Smith is 39 years old, so you don't want to be using him all the time either. But um, getting Edmonton's getting dog money. I mean, swing to Edmonton just simply because you can't see – I can't see them losing – three games in a row to Toronto at home? Really? I mean, that's horrific. And I know Toronto's a strong team, don't get me wrong, but they have been on the road for a long time. And Edmonton should be a strong team. And that's really what the problem is here. Um, I don't know, give me more time to think about it and I may end up taking Toronto. Anyways, and that's the other thing. Hutchinson is in net for Toronto. Hutchinson got a shutout. You're Edmonton Oilers, you do not get lose to a team in a shutout with Hutchinson and net ridiculous absolutely ridiculous if Edmonton plays like they can play against Toronto which would mean taking risks and just screw it don't worry about whether their goaltender is going to stop every puck the only way Edmonton's beating Toronto is if they sort of run and gun with them a little bit as far as I'm concerned based on what their roster is they be, they really have to um if the, and if they hit and they play the way they Edmonton has to hit, skate hard, and get back and play a high flow game to beat Toronto. If they do that with Hutchinson and Net, they should win. So slightly going to Edmonton, I'm not betting a lot. Edmonton is my other team. Philadelphia and the Oilers are my two teams, and uh, they're really pissing me off this year, to say to say the least. Uh, St. Louis versus Anaheim. St. Louis probably on paper should win this game. If you go to opening, you're getting 176 on St. Louis. Um, I last last time I took Anaheim and they almost pulled it out uh, with Gibson and Net, and now you're gonna have and that and St. Louis had their backup Huso and Net. Um, Bennington should be in Net tonight, and Anaheim is without Lindholm which is basically their best defenseman. They're out, with, out without Lindholm and Manson. Um, maybe Fowler, you could say, is their best defenseman. But there's going to be a whole lot of defensemen playing way more minutes than they should be. Um, I guess a St. Louis team that's pretty banged up. They've got a lot of players, although I heard possibly that uh, – they could be getting a few people back today. We'll look at St. Louis here. This is uh, NBC Sports uh, injury report. TSN is also very good. Uh, but St. Louis, um, Tarasenko, apparently, let's see what it says here. It sounds like Tarasenko is very close, but he won't make his return on Wednesday. But they've got... Pareko out, Jaden Schwartz. It's it's last time wasn't a bad spot for Anaheim, and this spot's not a bad spot for Anaheim. I could see Anaheim winning this game, to tell you the honest truth. Um, 
but it's hard to pull the trigger without Lynn Holman. So I'm probably going to go small pearls and St. Louis since you're not really getting all that much juice. I don't feel comfortable in going St. Louis and reg simply because they're not playing at their greatest. Their defense has been abysmal and uh, this year so far, which is odd saying that about St. Louis. Um, but with Lynn Holm out, they should be able to pull that game out. But I'm not putting a large, I'm not putting large money on it. That's all I'm saying there. Uh, and as far as the over under is concerned, who knows with St. Louis? You should never be going under over with Anaheim uh, because they really have a pop gun pop gun offense. But they won. It was five four last game. Before that, St. Louis was seven six against Saint, uh, San Jose. There's been a lot of overs this year. Um, with Gibson in net, what are you getting? Five and a half here? Five and a half? I mean, they're, they've been going over so much for the juice. Maybe throw a half a unit on the over at 202. Just, it's been going that way. It's probably close to a coin flip. Um, Minnesota versus Vegas. Uh, Minnesota has been playing just stupid amounts of hockey. Uh, I had Vegas to win last game. Vegas came back in the third because Minnesota pretty much run out of gas. This is simply just two days later now. And, uh, yeah, Minnesota is a hardworking team. They're probably going to be putting Kakanen in, I think, this game. I really like the juice at 220 for Minnesota. But, um... Again, Minnesota, let's go back a little bit. Vegas is fairly, still fairly fresh. And Minnesota has, people say, well, you know, they had a day off. Well, with hockey, you don't recover that fast, uh, generally speaking. Um, three, one, two, three, four, day off, play. Day off, play Vegas. Day off, play Vegas. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, six games in ten nights. Not great. Uh, most, it's close. They could that day off could be a uh, could have recuperated them pretty well. I'll tell you what, they outworked Vegas the first two periods, and then Vegas ended up coming back the last game. Here's the thing: Vegas isn't going to be. Uh, surprised by Minnesota this time, I don't think. I'm slightly going to lean. Oh, you know what? I got Wild PL. That's the best play. Wild PL. What are you getting on the uh, spread here? Yeah, one six. Put it in a parlay and Wild. The Minnesota will probably keep it close. They're just too hard working of a team and they could possibly win it. So I'd say about 75 to 80% of the time, Minnesota keeps it to one goal. And if you go to opening, you can get it for 162. That's not bad. That's almost what you're getting for Vegas on the ML. So, yeah, that's probably my my play there. Arizona versus LA. Uh, Kemper is out for Arizona. Los Angeles is now. Last year, the first came back off of a road trip was always, and not just last year, always. The first game back after a long road trip, you always went with the road team. This year now, on the other hand, it's totally different. Um, the first game back off a road trip, teams have been doing really well, actually. And I think it's just because with COVID going on and all of the things going on, coming home has been a great energy shift for teams. They get recuperated to see their kids and see their family and all that stuff like that. And everything's okay. And it kind of just takes the edge off a little bit. Also, Los Angeles is just playing unbelievable um, this year. I, I picked them before the season to uh, make the playoffs. And it looks like that prediction is going to come through. And at two, you're, they're getting dog money here against Arizona. I got to go with L.A. all day. I'm taking L.A. on this one. On the money line, and as far as the total is concerned, Arizona with Ranta, uh, probably under here. That's why you're only getting 174. So I'd probably go the under here. Now, Avs versus, okay, Colorado versus San Jose. San Jose won the last game 6 to 2. Uh, 
Da- Grubauer did not play well. Um, and that's my main concern about this game, is that will Grubauer come back and play well again? Um, Colorado's got to start hitting. You can't... The, he's they For some reason this year, they've just decided to play... Um, without urgency and without uh, physicality uh, and it's really burning them however I can't stay away from them this time although last time I had large pearls on the over and Colorado which pretty much made it a wash but I'm going to probably go back to it again San Jose is playing over almost every game their defense is terrible Colorado should come back here and be pissed that they lost to a San Jose team that almost certainly is not going to make the playoffs. I hope. I hope. Colorado, if you don't, um, probably I'm not going to be coming to get you. In fact, I'm going to send um, Hernandez. Hernandez, could you please head down to San Jose this morning before the game, pick up all the Colorado Avalanche uh, people and bring them to Perlo's House of Spanking. Perlo's House of Spanking. The place where you can correct all of your in your wrongs. So, Perlo's House of Spanking here in Edmonton, Alberta. You can uh, set up an uh, set up a reservation anytime you want, because uh, everybody needs a spanking occasionally. And Colorado team is that's how we know we're going to win. We're going to bring them all down there. They're going to get their spankings, and they're going to play more physical, aren't you, Colorado? I know you're watching. I know you are. So, more physical you will play. Okay, boys and girls, that's my full 42. That's all I have to give today. Uh, uh, Have a great day. Lots of love to you. Okay, bye.